you know where my music comes from now. <laughs> I love that. Nice little intro, huh? How is everyone on such a pleasant evening? Is your summer going swell? That's a word you don't hear very often. You still hear it, which is not very often. Are you having a swell summer? Sweltering is probably more like it. You're having a sweltering summer. It has been a relatively hot summer. At least I think it has. And it seems like in another month and a half, maybe two months at the most, fall will be upon us. And maybe we'll have some cooling down temperatures, you know. Which would be nice. And fall is my favorite time of the year. For y'all who didn't know that, October being my number one month, though. Yes, I love October. Even though it almost took a beating because that's when my late fiance had passed away on October. But I decided not to let that interfere with it being my favorite month. And he wouldn't have wanted that anyway. So Now, before we begin, I wanted to say, first of all, let me say this. Suppose you had found a time machine. I mean, I know most of you don't believe in it, but let's just say for an argument's sake, there was, and you got into it and you went back like a couple of hundred years. Probably even if you went back a hundred years, that would be the case. You wouldn't probably understand much they were saying. You'd probably get a lot of a, uh, trying to talk to people, right? I mean, if you remember even in Back to the Future, he went back to 1955, I think it was. And he had to learn a few things that they didn't talk like he did, and that was in the 80s. That was only like, what, some 30-some years. Can you imagine? Going back 50 years, 100 years, 200 years, You'd have to learn pretty fast, wouldn't you? You wouldn't want to get beat up very often. And I also wanted to go back. I know last time we did the 1950s as part of that. Um, I wanted to say hi, Grandpa, on my mom's side, my dad, my mom's dad. Of course, gone for quite a few years by now. Um, about 20 years, I think, by now. He was such a laid-back, easy-going guy. But when he got mad, oh, yes, you knew it. Dag nabbit. <laughs> That's about as mad as he got. In other words, not very much, right? Um, my grandma, who was, his wife, who was, opposite. I, God bless her, so I love her really a lot, but she was so domineering, you know, so she was a little domineering, okay, a lot. I know some other way she was probably raised, but I had a few tangles with her, but no, I was, you know, did respect her, so, but, um, yeah. He said, that Dag Nabbit Vivian quite a few times. Vivian is usually what he called her. I think that was her name because she, she had like Mabel and, and, and Myrtle and I think Vivian was her actual name. <laughs> but yeah, when he starts saying Dag Nabbit, gosh golly darn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but we all should just, you know, be like that. Not get too, mm, just, yeah. But he was really, you know, to him, he was mad and upset when he would say that. Most of the time, he just liked to sit in his favorite chair and watch his sports on TV. And I know a lot of you guys say, yeah, what's wrong with that, right? So, let's get started. And now this is in the 1910-ish, you know, early 1900s to 1910. 
time because I think last time we stopped around 1920. So, Blado. What you got, oh? Blado? No. <laughs> There's a Blado, a drunk. I'm guessing not just talking about somebody who got drunk, but talking about somebody who gets drunk a lot. You know, stays drunk, maybe. A Blado. Dilly. That's Dilly. That sounds like golly gosh darn, doesn't it? It means excellent. Gold brick. She's a gold... No. <laughs> I can't even say that. She's a brick house. But she's, if, she, if you're calling her a gold brick, and she understood what you meant, she'd probably smack. This could be a man or a woman. It means a lazy person who doesn't do their fair share. Nobody back in the day would want to be called a gold brick. I'm sure you know a few of those, though. Hmm. We all do, right? Stop being a gold brick. <laughs> On the make. Now, I think we've all heard that phrase before, you know? On the make. You don't say it really anymore, but if you heard it, you know what they were talking about on the make. Ooh, he's closing out of getting some, huh? He's on the make. It means being flirtatious and whatever. Duck soup. If something's duck soup, it means it's easy peasy. And if you don't know what that means, no, I'm just kidding. Easy peasy. It means it's easy, right? Drugstore Cowboy. Yeah. How you doing? We know what a drugstore cowboy is, right, Joey? I'm friends. <laughs> That's the guy who picks up the chicks. Drugstore Cowboy. They used that term also in the 1920s, so. I think we could, if somebody used it today, people would pretty much know exactly what they meant, though. Just saying. Cash or check. I love that. When I read that, I was like, oh, yeah, cash or check. That, that's something they need to bring back. Well, some people might already even know what that means, you know. If you're on a date, cash or check. We're not talking about in a restaurant or something. Yeah. We're talking about the guy saying that to the girl. You kiss now, which is the cash, or the check, or later. And today, it would probably have even a more, you know, meaning to it. Like, you're putting out now, or later? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Bimbo. You probably don't go around generally saying that. But back in the 1910-ish time, that was actually a compliment. Now, before you use that today, you might want to make sure that the person you're saying it to knows it's a compliment. Because it just doesn't sound very complimentary. Usually, a bimbo today is a woman, right? A, an easy woman. Am I wrong? I mean, you don't hear that term. In a, I think that was more like a 1950s or 60s type of slang, 70s, I don't know. He's a bimbo. It could still be a, uh, it could still use it for a woman, even though it's generally it was a guy term back in the day. It just means tough guy. Yeah, I'm a bimbo. You want me to show you? Some women might be that tough too. You might want to, before you call a tough woman a bimbo, you might want to make sure she knows you're complimenting her. Or you might get smack gold, you know. Date. Hmm. Oh, the date. What are you saying that for? Don't we know what a date is? It's either something on the calendar or, or, or. How you doing? Want to go out on a date? Or, you know, that tasty little thing. I like dates. But all of those would be, eh, eh, eh. And then 1910, well, I'm not saying 
they didn't have those for 19... I don't think they had the date you want to go out on a date. Although, I was sure think it would be interesting to learn the terminology for that. My great-grandparents were in their 20s around this time, and that would have been a cool thing to know. But date back then meant a foolish person, so you would not have one to be called a date. I don't know why that terminology was used for a foolish person. If they were insulting the little tasty morsel, or... Who knows how these things come about, right? Do dad. You know, every once in a while you hear someone who says something like that, oh, look at the do dad. And you're like, uh huh. I mean, you could guess what it means. Um, try to think of the, the terminology that my late husband used to use for such things, those little, like, like knickknack type things, like decorative. I think they say here, Decorative article. <laughs> what not? He used to say what not. You know those little what nots? Which is probably another term back in the day. A southern thing, you know. He's he being from had been from North Carolina. Doodad sounds like something else that would have you know, maybe it come from that it error uh, area. An error, you know. Obviously, it came in the 1910-ish time. Lollapalooza. That is a mouthful for just saying excellent. Outstanding. Lollapalooza. Say that next time you're <laughs> around your friends or at a party. Like, excellent. Outstanding. Instead of saying that, Lollapalooza. If you can spit out the word and none of the guys are going to go mm -hmm. boner we all heard that term for what guys are raising their eyebrows about right but we're talking about 1910 not saying they didn't use such words back then you know they of course they still had guys were still guys back then but um Maybe even more manly. Just kidding. You never know. Um, but Boner did not. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe somebody did use it for that back then. But in general, that's not what that meant. It meant a mistake or an error. Now, to the 1800s. Now, you heard people say when they ask a question, damned if I know. What if you just had one word you can say, which means damned if I know. But you wouldn't have to say damned if I know, unless you really wanted to. Damfino. Is so-and-so going out to get damfino? Damned if I know. Damfino. Of course, that person would probably have to know what you were talking about, because they would say, huh? Hey, if you wanted to just throw a word out sometime, Damfino. Let's bring Damfino back. It'd be cool. Pod snappery. That's like a Pollyanna. Uh, maybe a little bit more. No, no, I'm not seeing any bad thing out here. Uh, uh, only good things. No bad thing ever exists. I'm willfully saying nothing bad exists. That's that type of thing. And Bricky. Hey, has somebody called you Bricky? In the 1800s. That's because we are in the 1800s now. That was a compliment though. You know, today people would say Bricky and they would say, what are you trying to say? I'm stupid or something? Probably, I don't know. But no. Bricky meant Brave and strong like a brick wall. I guess guys could call a woman bricky, but they would have a different meaning, right? Chuckaboo. I thought that was cute. Doesn't sound like something um, guys would... And, and it could be a, for women, too, to, you know. But chuckaboos are 
best buds or pal. So women can use that term, I suppose, too, but I think it mostly had been a guy term, you know, not, you know, but friends, really close friends. The best buds, they're chuckapoos, chuckaboos, excuse me, chuckapoos. <laughs> that would be just as funny, though. Chuckaboos, we're chuckaboos, best buds. Uh huh. Ruffles. No, not talking about the little frilly stuff on the lace. And I'm not talking about potato chips. You know, ruffles, handcuffs. A nice way of saying handcuffs. I don't know how they got that for that because. There's nothing ruffly about handcuffs, but okay, that's what they had. And lush, some people might say, she's lush or something, well, oh, she's lush or she's lush, Ooh. but back in the day it meant, it just meant alcoholic drink. Was it talking about like an uh, adjective or something about a person? It was just meaning drink, alcoholic drink, that is. Caper, criminal, dooskitch. If you called someone a bimbo and they didn't know what you meant, they would probably give you a dooskitch. A beating, right? Because that's what dooskitch means, a beating. Dipper. That's what they call the person who picked pockets. You know, they dipped their hand in. They were a dipper. Makes sense. Makes sense. Dolly Mop. The woman would not have wanted to be called a Dolly Mop. Although I like the name Dolly for a woman's name, that Dolly Mop was not a good. That meant a part time prostitute. Not a full-time one now. A part-time one. Uh, she's just a dolly mop, you know. It's not full-time, she's just a part-time. Lamps. That's what they called their eyes. And I imagine it was mostly a terminology that a, a guy would use for the woman. Because her eyes were like lamps. They were like light. Lamps to describe. Nice. And Lacken. Oh, that was a cuddly term a guy used to call his wife, which meant wife. Lacken. Oh, my little Lacken. Sounds like it's, I don't know, Scandinavian or something, but they, all these are English words, so. Now we're in the 1700s. That was the 1800s. Now we're in the 1700s. And the further back we go, the less words I'll have because, you know. Bushel Bubby. Bushel Bubby. A boost, well bosomed woman. It's a lot of word for, for saying that, though. Just saying. Captain Queer Knobs. No, it doesn't mean, you know, what people think of as queer today. But it is still not a compliment, though. Cap if you called someone a Captain Queer Knobs, that meant he was shabbily ill dressed. So, probably wouldn't want to be called that. You know, just say. Dangler, a man who randomly follows women. Song should not stalk her, but thank you. Why not? If it's in a good complimentary way. Diddle just means gin. Double jug. I know, I know, guys. I huh? know what that means. <laughs> and you would be wrong. I know it sounds like that. Double jugs, but you know. It does sound like it'd be a well-bosomed woman. But it's actually a guy term. Means 
the guy's backside, his buttocks, his, how they say a man's, yeah, they say a man's backside, his, his, you know, his butt. A guy who's double jive, sounds pretty nice. Hey, funny a word we women can use, right? Land pirates, okay, you probably don't have very many of those. Well, you never know, but back in the day, back in the 17 and early 1800s, they had the highwaymen, and that was just another terminology for highwaymen. It sounds so romantic, unless you were there and you had the <laughs> hand your jewels over. That actually was quite scary. And eternity box. People could probably just about guess without it. And no, it's on jewelry box or a music box. Just lighting a little. Eternity box is just a nice way of saying coffin. I think I prefer coffin. Eternity box sounds so fine now. And Eve's custom house. Huh? That's just a way of saying a woman's private parts. I think it's just easier to say a woman's private parts, but Eve's custom house, you know. Ging I'm not sure if it's Ginga mobs or Jinga mobs. I'm going to say Ginga mobs. That means testicles. I think testicles sounds easier to say, but there you go, guys. And goat's jig. A couple... A couple who are having enthusiastic, not just any sex, enthusiastic sex. A goat's jig. Sarah and Rob did a goat's jig. Did you hear them last night? Hobbledygee. Hobbledygee. A pace that is between a walk, run, or trot. Hmm. That is so weird. Some of these words you just, you wouldn't think you would say. Hobbledygee, though. Hobbledygee, hobbledygee. I think it was probably gee. A pace between a walk, run, and trot. Hmm. Makes it kind of sound like you're a horse, you know. Left hand wife. Ladies, don't be a left hand wife. Because then you're a mistress. You're not the, you know, you're the left hand. Okay, now we're in the 1600s. I told you it's not going to be as long. Spark. Now, obviously, most of us know what a spark is. You know, a lighter and there's a spark. Or you see someone across the room, bang, there's a spark. Or it could be an elegantly dressed young man or boyfriend. Back in the 1600s, at least, you know, he was dressed real spark, I guess. <laughs> I know. He was nicely sparked up. I don't know how they used it. Something like that. Flush. Wealthy, having much money. I just got paid. Um, you know, I'm flush with, you know. I think they still sometimes use that a little bit. So now you know where some of these words come from what time frame buzz ah oh, we've all heard that before meaning that of course some people are buzzers the bee that buzzes the doorbell buzzes but buzz can also mean gossip and in the 1600s it also meant gossip let's have a buzz let's buzz around blab Tattle or inform. Oh, that's where that word came from. We've all heard about blab, blabbermouth. 
Now we know what time frame it came from. 1600s. Okay. Piggledy Piggledy. That is when somebody who is into in total disorder. He was running around the room higgledy piggledy. <laughs> uh oh. Higgledy piggledy. Piggledy piggle. Higgledy piggledy. Uh, a mouth full to say that. Banbury story or tale. A Banbury tale or a Banbury story. That means somebody who has a ridiculous story that just goes on, but it's really meaningless because there's really not a point to their conversation. There you go. That's a Banbury story or a Banbury tale. I'm sure we've known people who have done that before. And Beard Splitter. Hmm. That's a guy who enjoys women. I would say more than half the world is uh, of guys, of men, are beard splitters, wouldn't you? Thank you. Um, chameleon diet. That's like when you miss a meal or you're picking at your food or you don't eat much or at all. Because chameleons sort of, they don't eat very much. They just sort of just, so. You're a on a chameleon diet. A good voice to beg bacon. Please don't say that about me. Definitely not about my singing, no. <laughs> that means don't quit your day job. <laughs> a good voice to beg bacon. I guess not, it's not only necessarily saying that about your voice, but it's also saying that about if you, you're, you want to, you're like you're, you want to become an actor or whatever you want to be and and, and you're not very good at it, somebody's like, yeah, you got a good voice to beg bacon because that's what you'll be doing. No. Um, gate foundered, extremely hungry. I think that's what it says. Gut, excuse me, gut foundered. I'm so gut foundered, I'm extremely hungry. And now we'll be in the, just checking, the 1500s, which is good because we are getting, woohoo, late 1500s for this, this next one, molly grubs, molly grubs, don't get down in the molly grubs, that means don't get down on the dumps, right? Oh, Molly was in the Molly Grubs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't even mean it to sound, that sounded so funny. Rook, to cheat or deceive. And this is the 1500s, remember. Bug be bear, bug bear, something that frightens you. <laughs> it was such a bug bear. <laughs> so weird. Pipes. That's the I got good pipes, do you? And Geek. I wonder if that is what later turned into Geek. Geek. G E C K. Geek. And this was back from like 1510, so this was in the early 1500s. And it meant an eccentric individual. So not exactly maybe a geek, but ish. And now the last of the, the 1400s. Not that much, because when you really get down to this part, it's like, you know, yeah. like I said, you, you scramble to find the words. Could you imagine going back to the 1400s? It's like, Ajax. I wonder if that is how they got that, that you know, that Ajax that you pour into the toilet, because Ajax meant toilet. I wonder if that's where that co that name come from, from the company, you know, for the product. Be interesting. And angels' food. That meant strong beer. 
angel's food. I don't think angels would drink beer, but interesting. Baggage. Now, we know baggage usually means your luggage or all your problems or sometimes guys might say my meaning them wives you know baggage but if it was a terminology people use for women not a good one obviously it meant loose woman and the further back you go it was more how did they say that more more harsher for the you know more than just loose you know like uh yeah would not want to be called baggage back in the 1400s if you were a woman belly cheer a feast with good food to eat and plenty to spare whoops that was a belly belly cheers cup and can two boon companions there's cup and can there are a couple of cup and can i don't know when they mean boon companions if they're talking about drinking buddies or they're talking just about best buds or all wind sucker jealous person it's a wind sucker they suck the wind right out of that because they were so jealous and Hafty Tufty. Or Hafty Tufty. I don't know. A braggart. Somebody who brags about everything. And now you got a few more words to put out there to your family, friends, or just somebody you want to screw with smart. Right? If you have some shows, hey, you can put it on there. I love, I, I actually do love going back and seeing. It's, I think it's all interesting to go back and hear how people talk. But I can just imagine if you would ever go back that far in time. You, unless you were a, like a lingus or somebody who actually studied this and knew just, and even then, we probably don't know all the ins and outs. Somebody who knows like the 40, oh, I know how the 1400 people talk, oh, I know how the, which would be like the 15th century, I guess. I know ins and outs, how they talk, blah, 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 blah. Would probably still have to learn quite a lot if they went back there. Because there's always going to be words like that people said that aren't, didn't make it into the books or anything, right? And you see how that is just within the 1900s you know the 90s and the 80s and the 70s and the 60s they all had you know they might have had intermingling words but they also had a lot of different words so you can just imagine and we're all coming up always all the time with new things to say i still like to say talk to the hand. talk to the hand everyone but anyway i'll be waving into Friday now <laughs> and wishing everyone to have a happy blast. Blast. There's a word you don't hear as often anymore. But have a blast this weekend. And um, yeah, gobbledy gookie, whatever all else. <laughs> I don't even remember half the words I said, but have a great time and I will say over and out I wonder how far back that went but over and out